If you need to update your deck, go to 50cards.shop. Get 5% off your next purchase when you use code NEXUS. Hello, YouTube. It's Miles. I'm back. Um, I was going to try and say something witty, but I'm really hungry. So we're doing Shadow Paladin Premium because uh, this has been a long time coming. Um, this is Luard. It always is. You're never going to see another Shadow Paladin Premium deck profile on this channel. Uh, probably. Challenge accepted. <laughs> <laughs> so your starter, I run uh, Root because eventually I can get an SP of it. It's on ride, you get to draw and get a quick shield if you go second. Grade threes. Um, we run four copies of Dragheart, Luard. Uh, this should be obvious, um, even though I know in previous tech profiles I've done like the, you know, G Luard, but um, after careful consideration and months of um, training in the mountains, I came to realize that a 13k base grade 3 that actually lets you do something on turn 3 going first um, with, you know, a force gift is actually unquestionably better. So you run that. Um, its main skill is uh, you can return two grade 1 rear guards, or wow, you can retire two grade 1 rear guards, um, draw a card, and I believe you get to retire one of your opponent's rear guards. Yeah, so like it's nice that it actually has some degree of control, uh, but its second skill is uh, you can counterblast three. Jesus Christ, what is it? Yeah, Counterblast 3, return to normal units, and then you get to ride a grade 4 from your deck or your hand. I barely use this skill. Return to normal to the drop, search your deck for one Drag Driver Luard, ride it. Yeah. So you specifically search out Drag Driver, and then you ride it. And then at end of turn, you ride back down um, to this guy. So that turn, you are getting three Force Gifts, which is just really good as a turn one. Um, probably wondering, what the fuck does Drag Driver Lord do? And the answer is, we run two of it. Um, but his skill is, uh, so his second skill, which I guess we'll go into first, is when you place it, counterblast one. For every Luard in your soul, plus one, search your deck for that many grade ones, call them to the board. So, board fail. Really good for your first, uh, like, again, the fact that you can do something. Can you turn that off, please? Thank you. The fact that you can do something, um... Like on your, if you're going first and you can't stride, it's just really helpful. But its other skill is um, if, uh, no, it's not even an if, it's just for the entire turn. Um, this unit gets 5k, free every grade one card on your board. Um, and then, oh, yeah. And then um, if the number of Luards, is it specifically Luard or is it grade three? It's grade three. The number of grade three cards in this card's soul, you don't use that skill. Mm -hmm. um, you used to back when PPO was allowed to be played. Yeah, around. but like you're not you're not gonna have. There's a chance you'll have access to it if mm. you can call out um, a grade two in this deck. But generally speaking, like this is not the play you go for. But if you have two Luards grade threes in your soul, then the original crit of um, your grade one rear guards becomes two, not gain one, becomes two. Well, it's a good thing Nightmare Painter puts Eldana in the soul for you. Too bad I don't want a Nightmare. <laughs> Oh no. Uh, okay, so that's it for that. I only run two because if you damage it, that's really bad. And like, you do kind of want to go into it. And I mean, seeing the second one doesn't hurt much in terms of like having stride fodder. So there you go. Then my final grade three is Ildana. I run one because you guys wanted to see it. <laughs> okay, going to, no, I'm kidding. Um, so Ildana <laughs> is a newer card-ish. I mean, not that much, not new anymore, but it took me a minute to pick up um, and then like figure out how to fit it in there. Um, but we made it work. We always make it work when it comes to fitting things inside of things. Mm. Um, so it's skill, because I don't remember I have to read it, is um, in the deck and drop zone, it counts as a grade one, so it gets grade minus two. Like, that's pretty good already. You can kind of search it out. It fuels ritual, which this deck desperately needed help on. Um, so I'm really glad that we got that. Uh, but I do like its other skill. It's in your hand. If your Vanguard's grade one, you can discard this card, and then you check the top 10 cards of your deck. Sorry, reveal the top 10 cards of your deck. And if the total number um, of revealed, uh, if you reveal two or more grade ones, you can pick another grade two from among that 10 and add it to your hand. So like, you're seldom gonna be grade locked with this deck, at, at least I think, cause like ratios aren't terrible, but like, it is nice to have access to that. That's helpful. And it's other skill just does not fucking matter. It's like Vanguard or Rearguard, you kind of bust one and retire two of your rear guards, and then this unit gets like power or some shit. For every grade one rear guard in your drop. Yeah, you draw two. And then if it's on Vanguard for every grade one rear guard in your drop, for every grade one unit, <laughs> uh, it gets 5k. So it's like bad.
but um, in general, use it for its grade one aspect. And then the second skill is really helpful early game as well. But like, you don't want to run too many because that's just not going to be that helpful. Um, so moving on to grade twos, let's first go into what is probably like consistently my favorite grade two in the stack. Um, I run three copies of Morion Spear Dragon. Its skill is act once per turn on Vanguard or Rearguard. You can sub last one and discard a card from your hand. Um, and then draw, uh, and this unit gets 5k, but if you discard a grade one, this unit gets 10k instead. Um, that is so helpful. Like, it just, it, it, it will have an application like every single turn you have it, and it is just so helpful. It is like what I reserve soul for. I, I don't know, I like, four is too many. Definitely, but like it's 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 your it's your like early game you know ritual fuel. It's it's your like mid game heavy hitter um, alongside Dagda. But like just I don't know. It's it's so helpful. I love this card so much. Um, I run two Leafail. The main reason I, I like had it at three, and I was just seeing him too often in the late game. And it's just like the counterblast one isn't that good, especially the the further. So it, it's it's on on ride or call counterblast one. Um, and then search your deck for a grade one, call it to uh, an open rear guard. So like, first off, if you have, you know, a full board, then this card doesn't do anything. Late game, you're barely gonna have any grade ones and your late game turn should be your deck to play. So it's like, you don't want to call grade ones until then. And then secondly, like the counterblast late game can actually hurt and even actually more so early game. If you don't have that much damage, then um, your counterblasts are pretty precious. And I know that you can refund it by calling out Charon, but it's like, what's the point, you know? I mean, obviously like that's, that, that is the point. It's just, it's why you don't want to run too many of them. So I keep it at two. I don't think it's that important. Uh, and then the man himself, I run three Dagda. I know people are like, what are you running for? It's just like, I, I don't, I'm sorry, but this deck burns through itself so much. I don't really feel the need to justify running four copies of anything other than like stuff that helps consistency. His skill is a uh, GB1, so you need to have a face up G unit on your Vanguard circle or in your G zone for those D babies who don't know what I'm talking about. Ritual five, so already it's like, you know, kind of used mid game, but you're gonna be a ritual five by like turn zero. Um, so it's on attack, counter plus one, pick a rear guard, uh, grade one or less rear guard, and then retire it. Search your deck for two grade ones, um, call them, and uh, separate rear guards, and that's it. Um, they don't need to be open, which is really helpful. So like, you got one guy on this board. Um, sometimes people are like, no, the ideal play is to have two Dagda. But I, I don't know. I think it's better to just have the one because um, like late game, I have just never been in a position where I have four to six grade ones in my deck. That just doesn't really seem like the ideal play. But it, this is like, he's he's your main offense. I mean, late game with uh, your G unit, it's just gonna kill. It's such a good card. Like there's a reason why people rejoice when they see this card hit your uh, damage zone, which I guess is partially reason to earn for. But like, again, I don't, I, I tried four and it was just too, it messes with the, the ratios too much. So now we got a few one ups. I run one Blaster Dark. Its skill is on Rider Call, counter blast one. Your opponent picks one of their rear guards and retires it. And then its other skill is if your opponent has an empty board, you can drop a card from your hand and give this unit twin drive. Really? So like, yeah, absolutely. I mean, like the, this card is truly, I hate V Shadows. And this card has truly like stood the test of time, which is just proof <laughs> that it is like the revolutionary Vanguard unit. Um, we're never gonna get a better card. I would run four if it were viable, but um, sadly, or I think what makes it special is that I run the one, um, which is why I have the best artwork too. I, I didn't want to like do like, you know, four different artworks. I just thought, let's just go for the objectively best one. The main reason I run this though, is because you can search it out. There you have like, yeah, I'm sure everyone knows it, but you know, there's the like, I should probably just show this. But like, there's an MO which calls out a 5k. There's Dump Hood, which you call out because it's a 5k grade too. And then I'll go into that next. But basically Dump Hood's skill is um, Act. Soul Blast 1, don't worry about it's continuous. It's, we're just gonna go into the second skill, but it's uh, Act, Soul Blast 1, and then retire this card. Search your deck for a Blaster Dark and add it to hand. So you do that. It's it's basically to guarantee a grade two ride, provided you see Nemen. Um, so we run those. And then my final grade two, is uh, Encounter Skull Witch Nemen. This is a, again, new card. But um, the reason I run the one is because it is searchable with uh, grade one V Nemen. Um, her skill is uh, on call. If your Vanguard is a Shadow Paladin card, which obviously um, you can counter plus one and then put a card from her hand into your soul. 
uh, draw two cards. So like, oh wow, that's cool. So the reason why that is cool is because if you are going first, right? And you're not gonna have a stride turn. You are using drag heart. You use drag heart, you go into drag driver. Drag driver skill, right? You have one. Okay, you have one card, you have one grade three and soul. Drag driver skill, and then let's say this is your hand, okay. Drag driver skill calls you out your grade one Nemen. Grade one Nemen calls out your grade two Nemen. Grade two Nemen skill, add this to soul. Now you have two crit on turn three. That's why you run that. It's it's very good. It's very good for the offense. That is vitally important. I mean, like, it's not the play you want to go for. It's literally just there in case you go uh, first, but also like drawing two cards in a deck where you really want to draw cards is very helpful. So anyway, let's go into our grade ones now. I'll just get this out of the way right now, but I run the three copies of Skullwitch Nemen. At this point, it's pretty obvious what it does, but her skill is uh, you can rest her. Um, search your deck for any 5k power unit and then call it. You can only use this skill of the card Nemen once per turn. So um, like you can't do like a Nemen into a Nemen into a Nemen. You just get the one. Um, and of course I have to run it three because I run a fourth copy of a card with the exact same name, but that's okay. I actually never ran four to begin with. Three, Cherishing Knight Branwen. So this is like your grade three searcher. Um, it's on call, you know, check top five for a grade, on call or ride, check top five for a grade three, add it, and then you have to discard a card from your hand if you see it. Its other skill is uh, if the number of grade ones in your drop zone is three or more, then this unit gets 5K, which actually, funnily enough, it's like one of your primary, I mean, it's your primary dag to target. And because it has to be called from hand, to do the um, search, you're not gonna like fuck up your stack or whatever by calling with Dagda. So it's just a very good, uh, very offensive card. I think it's another one that I would run for him if I could like tweak the um, tweak the ratios, but like kind of figured I don't need to um, because just this deck works out really well with how I've had it. Uh, if you want to run four, go for it. Uh, I run two Black Sage Charon. Um, his skill is uh, when it's placed by the ability of a card. Uh, you can soul blast one, counter charge one, and then this unit gets 3k. So like, again, you can refund Dagda's cost, you can refund Leah Fail's cost, you can make it an 11k for like, you know, hitting, I don't know, some kind of number. <laughs> it's not gonna, be, that's not gonna be too much of a difference. Um, I have seen people run it at one because you can, you know, send it back. Um, I'm always just scared of like getting it damaged um, or, you know, sending it to the damage zone. Uh, but if you really want to up brand one to four, this is the card I would recommend dropping to one. I don't really think there's much open space elsewhere. Then I run two blue a spot of dragon. Um, this card I think was like slept on for a while. People run it now and I'm very happy about that because I love this card. So its skill is uh, when written or placed, not from hand, just anywhere, you mill the top three cards of your deck. If I believe all three of them, no, I'm sorry. You check the top three cards of your deck and you add either one claret sword, which is a grade three you don't run, so don't worry about that, or one Mori on spear. So it's another grade two searcher, which is very helpful. You add that to your hand and then you drop zone the rest. And then if you, the number of cards in your drop, the number of grade ones in your drop zone is uh, five or more, this unit gets 10K. So like late game, that's guaranteed because obviously, and this uh, Dagda calling out Espada is so good because with uh, Morfessa, it's going to be at a plus 25k. So it's a, it's a 33 grade one alone. And you're going to have that four, that force marker on board. And what's not amazing is uh, on your final turn decking yourself out. So be careful. And then I run one copy of Abyssal Owl. Um, its skill is on Vanguard or Rearguard when it's placed. You can have plus one and draw, but if your opponent has the same grade as your Vanguard, uh, if you and your opponent's vanguards are the same grade, you can soul blast one instead of counter blast one, so that, that's kind of nice. Um, it's a 5k mainly, that's why I run it. Uh, the skill isn't too good because like, because most of the time that you're calling it, it it's going to be on a turn where you are uh, on your grade four, meaning, you know, you're not going to have the same grade vanguard. Um, so like in the late game, it actually does not do anything because you don't want to waste that counter blast just for a single draw. Early game, it's nice. It helps if you are one going second, you know, you get that extra card for almost for free. You can soul blast out your grade one to do some early ritual. But like in general, it's nice that it's just a 5k. You get to remove it from the deck ASAP and deck thin. Um, and then just try and get it into your drop set for ritual as soon as possible. And then finally, for a last grade, we'll run four PGs, uh, Drag Saver Ezra's. Um, and this is like one of the last decks I think that runs grade one PGs because it's so good. Uh, so its skill is obviously the regular PG effect. 
uh, but its other skill is in the drop zone, GB1 and Ritual 3. Retire one of your rear guards, send another copy of Ezra's to the bottom of your deck, return this card to your hand. So it's a recyclable PG that trades out a PG into your deck and then also returns a grade one back there for ritual. So it evens things out. Late game, when you're going to be using it, you're not really hurting yourself with that like minus one grade one for ritual, I promise you. But in general, it's just a very nice card to have. Um, also, just saying this now, but late game, if you are trying to push for game, which you should be because this deck cannot survive after like turn four, I guess no deck can survive after turn four in premium. Um, don't be afraid to call this out with your Dagda because it's the difference between life and death. <laughs> anyway, there are your great ones. Let's go into triggers. Uh, we run one over trigger Olbaria because two cards getting 100 million power makes everybody angry and it's funny. This deck also runs fan triggers. Four copies of Belial Owl. Uh, its skill is just too good not to run. Um, it's a 10k shield and the critical power is only, the, the trigger power is only 5k, so like just be aware of that. I have seen people drop it to like two or three because of that reason, but like in general, this deck is already hitting for such big numbers that that extra 5k I kind of haven't noticed much of a difference in, so don't worry about that too much. So its skill is um, in the drop zone, GB1, Ritual 3 at the end of turn. Uh, if you have a Luard Vanguard, which of course you're going to because you're not going to ride Eldana, um, you can uh, return this card to your deck. So recyclable to crits. Very good. And then its other skill is when it's retired um, for the effect of a card. For the effect of the, sorry. When it's retired for the cost or effect, yeah, of one of your cards, um, you can draw one if your Vanguard's Luard, which again, obviously. So it's like drawing is super helpful. Um, then I run three uh, Knight of Evil Spear Gillinger. Uh, this is just your uh, um, stride fodder crit. So when you discard it for striding, it, it's it's grade three. Um, mainly just because there are some cases where like I do not have a grade three or like uh, obviously the handicap with this deck with running Dragheart, uh, V Dragheart Luard is that, um, you don't have like your free stride skill from the, uh, G Luards. So like that was something I noticed. And so I switched, um, I, I think I originally ran the crit that's like, you know, GB1 to add to soul draw and plus 5k to your Vanguard. But, uh, I switched it quick over to Gillinger when I changed up my grade three lineup. So that's it. Uh, it's also a 10k um power 50k shield so that's helpful to kind of even out the ratio um i run four copies of uh cursed eye raven um you can honestly do like three but you kind of want to run the four stand because you can restand Eldana. i mean um dagda wow so like again four stand really important um you could even like drop a belial and try and run a fifth stand of something but i don't know it's not really that move. it's like you're you're kind of killing your offense there um for the hope of just getting a double dag to turn uh, or triple potentially whatever um so anyway what does this card do it's uh act gb1 uh you can rest this card and then return it to the top of your deck um you shuffle and then you check the top two cards you can call any number of them uh to separate rear guards uh open rear guards as rest um so why this is good is because it's a it's a recyclable uh stand so like half of your trigger lineup is recyclable which is very good and then uh you are deck thinning so it's like the fact that you can select what you pick because the others go to the bottom um does mean that like if you are you know selecting you're like oh my god two non-trigger units i'll just call those out and then call over them or use them for retire fodder or whatever also in the event that you call out Mar uh, karen you can actually use his skill so that's funny um, again, it's a 5k trigger power, 10k shield, so like, this deck does sort of falter a little bit with like the trigger power, but I really have not noticed much of a difference because of your G unit power. Uh, and then I run four Astral Train Dragon because it's Platinum Games' objectively best game. I'm kidding about that, it's not. But um, it's just the, the the heal guardians, as people are calling it, your grade three heal triggers that have the, uh, you know, if you guard and you haven't ridden into grade three yet, your Vanguard gains 10k, or one of your opponent's units gets minus two crit. Very defensive, very helpful. It's also Stride Fodder. It's also Stride Fodder, and you can search it out using Brand One. Uh, I run an SP Quick Shield because for a brief time there, I loved this game enough that I dropped money on this. Mm. And let's go into G units. Um, we run three. I completely forgot that this is her name. Drag Principal Morfessa. Um, so this is your main card. I genuinely have not had a game where I've like not gone into her. Well, I have, but 
this is your main stride. So her skill is great. Um, it's act once per turn. You can counter bust one and uh, flip it any G unit face up. Retire two of your rear guards, uh, draw two cards, and for the remainder of your turn, all trigger units in your drop zone count as grade ones. So that solves all your ritual problems. It's hilarious to me that people are like, Eldana solves the problem, Eldana helps. It's like, yeah, but like, you're, you're, you're like, you already hit ritual ritual 10 so easily. Um, so the other thing is it's it's other skill. The, the one that really matters is uh, ritual 10. This is your offensive uh, ritual 10. Um, all of your front row units get 15k and a crit, uh, and then um, for every battle those units have, uh, when your opponent would guard, they have to guard uh, with two cards uh, from hand at a time. So just incredibly helpful. You can win by like your first stride. I mean, if that's not enough, you go into your and you survive the following turn, which hopefully you do. Uh, your second stride should kill it. But like this, on top of Dagda, on top of Blue Espada, is just such a killer. Like it's it's such a good card. Um. Then I run uh, two copies of Dark Dragon, Phantom Blaster Diablo, the, the classic. Um, the reason you run two is because you're really only running one. Um, he has to flip himself for his skill, but it's uh, Counter Blast one, flip a copy of itself, um, and then it gets 10K and a crit. Um, and then I believe, is that what it, no, no, you specifically, you need to have two face up or more G units. Um, so this can't be like use turn one or whatever, unless you G, church first stride, unless you G guard it. Whatever, don't worry about that. Um, it gets 10 kin of crit, and then when it attacks, you can retire three of your rear guards. And if your opponent doesn't retire two of theirs, uh, they can't guard from hand, or is it period? Uh, they cannot call guardians from hand uh, for that battle. Um, it's it's not that useful anymore. Um, but like in general, you are always trying to go for game with Morfessa because that's just such a much better card that this card is mainly used in the off chance that like Morfessa isn't enough, but, um, or like you can't go into Morfessa for whatever reason, but, um, you use this when your opponent has like little to no field because then it will actually matter. So just two of those, you don't need to use it more than once. Uh, I run two copies of Dragabus Luard. Uh, I like this card mainly, um, well, I'll go into its skill first and then explain, but its skill is uh, once per turn, you can soul bless one and then flip a copy of itself face up, choose uh, uh, one of your rear guards and then retire it. And um, you get to uh, search deck for up to two grade ones, call them. Um, and then if both of them had the ritual ability, you uh, can pick one of your opponent's rear guards and retire it. Its other skill is GB3. Uh, Ritual X, uh, all of your front row units get plus 10k for every uh, four grade ones in your drop zone. I really don't use it for that skill anymore. That was kind of a G era thing. But um, the main reason I run this card is because there are some like very awkward games where your first stride, you can just look at the setup and you're like, I know I'm not going to hit Ritual 10 with Morfessa. So I kind of go into this as like a little like, well, you know, it is the one like first turn G unit that can kind of do something, um, or at least it was for a while, uh, because it can set up a board. It can kind of make some plays. It's just, it's a safe option. You're not risking anything by retiring one grade one. Um, I run one dark dragon, chain ranker dragon. So uh, its skill is that um, uh, it gains the abilities, the skills of uh, its heart. So, um, not that that matters too much, but like you can technically hard ride Drag Driver Luard before riding this, and then you'll gain the uh, the crit to your front row, uh, or the the two the two base two crit skill. Uh, but I mainly run it for its second skill, which is GB three um, for every battle. Uh, if you have uh, three or more grade one, um, grade one or less units on your board, uh, for every battle um, when your opponent would guard, they have to guard three cards at a time. So like, it's not necessarily as good as Morfessa because Morfessa also has the power bonus, but it is kind of there as sort of like a fun, like, you know, a little style win. I've like tried to go with it for game and it's worked a few times, but like in general, if you are trying to go for game, you should be using Morfessa. But um, there's a lot of leniency in this deck's G zone because of just how objectively better Morfessa is than everything else. So like I do run the one as a sort of like alternate kill option. Um, similarly, I run one uh, drag angered uh, Ogma. 
Um, this is more of a control card. Its skill is Ritual 5. Uh, once per turn, you can counter one and soul bust one. Pick any number of, um, oh, and then you have to flip a G unit. Uh, pick any number of your rear guards uh, and retire them. And then your opponent has to uh, retire or discard that many as well. Um, so like if they have low hand and low field, you can kind of like nuke your board and then destroy your opponent's resources. Um, I'm going to be real, I have never used this card, it is mostly there for flip fodder, but because it requires very little and can stand on its own, um, I run that over like other options because it's just kind of like, to me, the most, um, you know, better to need it and, uh, or better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it, mostly. Uh, and then I do run one Dark Knight Crow Croc. So this is a newer card. Um, it is now your alternate option in the same way the Dragabus Luard is your alternate, but I, I think it's better. Um, so its skill is uh, once per turn, um, you can retire two of your rear guards and uh, your opponent has to choose three of their rear guards um, and retire them, which like, wow. That, that's that's good uh but then also um if they did not retire three then uh this card gets the ability where once per turn at the end of its battle uh you can counter boss one and then retire another two rear guards to restand this unit um and then it gets 10k so just a very nice like early game option it's not dependent on any ritual count um and just having a restanding g unit on your first stride can actually be pretty threatening uh so i do i do like this card i would not run in it more than one of because at that point you are probably nuking too much of your board or like if you have not if you're not in a position to go into more fessa on your second stride then you deserve to lose uh let's go into g guards uh, I run one copy of Dark Dragon. Um, I, thought, I thought that's a dope Griever. <laughs> Deep Griever Dragon. Um, this card's awesome. I think it solves like the main issue with this deck. Uh, so when you guard with it, um, you choose up to five grade ones uh, from your drop. Um, not grade or less though, which is a little bit of a bummer, but I guess that would be too broken being able to send back five triggers. Um, and then, okay, so I'll just restart yeah. on this. Uh, so I run one Dark Dragon, uh, Deep Griever Dragon. Um, its skill is when you guard with it, you can return five grade ones. I believe it has to be five or it's up to five. That Choose up to five. Okay, good. Choose up to five grade ones from your drop zone, return them to the bottom of your deck, and this unit gets 5k shield for each of them. So like, the reason why that's so good is because what I said earlier is that on your late game, because this deck burns through so many of your grade ones, it's almost hard to get out like a double Dagda, to maximize double Dagda. You're, you, sometimes I have not had four grade ones. Um, this immediately solves that issue. Like even if you do not need to guard, I would strongly recommend if the, the turn you're gonna do your maybe second Orfessa, just, just play this. Get those grade ones back in, it opens up a lot more options of what you want to call, and it basically guarantees that you'll pull off that double Dagda should you see the stand trigger. Um, just all around a great card. I mean, I love it. it. I think it solved like the main issue that I have with this deck. Um, and then its other ability is um, if you did return five, you can counterblast one, and then this basically becomes a PG, which just insane. And like, it's not a Sentinel, so it gets over Sentinel restrict. Great card. Uh, then I run one uh, Witch Queen of Iniquity, Jolito. Uh, this card has saved my ass more times than I think I can count, but I love her. Um, so her skill is uh, when you guard with her, uh, GB1, um, you pick a G Guardian and uh, flip it face up. Um, choose up to two of your grade one or less rear guards and then move them to Guardian Circle, which, cool, ritual fuel. Uh, but if you moved exactly two then you get to draw in a state of the game where so many things have like you know the battle door or the triple door or whatever like guard two or three at a time this is actually like won me the game maybe more times than i than like other you know g guard that are like on paper better than this um and because of the flip of course you only run the one you're only probably going to need the one but just an insanely helpful card 
Um, then I run three Dark Dragon Plot Maker Dragon. This is our tried and true uh, big boy of power. Um, when you guard with that ritual three plus 10k shield. I mean, like, it's it's so simple. It's just so, like, the 25k can be so helpful. That's basically it. And then I run one Dark Dragon, Dark Field Dragon. Um, when you guard with it, Soul Blast one. Uh, this unit gets 5k shield for every um, two grade ones in your drop zone. So, like, late game, this actually can become... I mean, just huge. Uh, so in the event that you're getting hit with something, you know, very uh, high in number, it, it becomes a huge, like, clutch defense. Um, so that is basically the deck. Uh, let me know if you have any changes. I've been playing this for a very, very long time. Too long. I, yes, much, much too long. So much so that for the first time in forever, I entered with a completely different clan um, for uh, uh, for regionals because I was like, I want to mix it up for once. <laughs> so um, that's the deck. Let me know how you guys liked it. And... Uh, you know, um, pop a little bottle of champagne in the comments for me because, you know, I, I'm, I'm finally back with the Shadow Paladin deck profile after all these uh, millennia. And I know it's what you all items. guys wanted. Yeah, I saw that recently. He's got... Leward, Leward's got a little... Uh, he's got a little femininity in the style. I love it. All right, y'all have a great night. Goodbye.